What's up, everybody? Justin here to do my Raw 25, 25th anniversary of Monday Night Raw. Here to do my Raw 25 review. Felt like a very long show. Felt like four hours. That's what the Rumble's going to be Sunday. A four-hour pay-per-view plus a two-hour kickoff. But because we have two Rumble matches, I think the show will go by pretty quick. This Raw 25, I really enjoyed it. It was uh, good enough for my expectations. It was really good enough. So, what am I trying to say? This Raw 25, I felt dragged on a little bit. Especially when it got to the third hour. But here we go. It kicked off with Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler. On microphones outside the ring from the Manhattan Center. Where the very first episodes of Raw were. For like the first, I don't know, couple months. Raw was there. And then they went to other smaller buildings in Poughkeepsie, New York, stuff like that. So JR and the King from the Manhattan Center. Then they go to Brooklyn where we have Shane McMahon and Stephanie in the ring together. Brother and sister in the ring together. And I expected them to bring out Vince. Vince McMahon, their father, the man that created it all. The man that started Monday Night Raw. It's his vision, it's his idea to do a live Monday Night Wrestling show. Because before that, before Raw 93, there, the other wrestling shows weren't live. Maybe WCW Saturday, Saturday Night was live, but big deal. Anyways, Vince, thank you for Monday Night Raw. I'm a wrestling fan. I'll be a wrestling fan till the day I die. Thank you for Monday Night Raw. I give Vince a lot of shit. I bash him sometimes, but thank you for Monday Night Raw. Because I don't know what the hell I'd do on Monday nights if I didn't, if I couldn't watch it. So Shane and Stephanie are out. And they start talking about Vince, their father, how he created it. He deserves the credit. And then they bring out their father, Vince McMahon. He gets a great reaction. Because a lot of respect, a lot of fans doing this to Vince. And uh, Vince on the stage, going to the ring, in the ring. A lot of fans start chanting, thank you Vince, thank you Vince. I don't think he could hear what the chant was because he's getting old. But Stephanie told him, Dad, they're chanting, thank you, Vince. And I think uh, Vince looked pretty emotional. In my opinion, he looked pretty emotional because just think about it. He uh, started WWE, he, well, he got it from his father, but he created what it is today. It's a global, international, worldwide phenomenon. And who cares if the ratings are down. It's still a phenomenon. And uh, Vince has created an empire. A wrestling empire. He put WCW out of business. He put all the territories out of business. Because they were too stupid, in my opinion, to try to compete with Vince. They were too stupid. They just gave up. And they got their ass kicked by Vince, who was a smarter businessman... In my opinion, Vince, even though he sports entertainment in the late 80s, early 90s, there's was a lot of cartoonish, cartoon characters in his company, he still survived. And he was the number one company probably since, probably 86. He's been the number one wrestling company, in my opinion. So Vince comes out, he looks emotional. I actually got emotional watching because I just, I got, I got emotional, just uh, happiness, happy emotion, just for being a wrestling fan, for being a fan of Monday Night Raw. 
I felt very happy and proud that Raw is 25 years old and it's going to keep on going on. Even if it gets off a cable network, in the future I could see Raw going on WWE Network and it will keep on going. It will not end. It's already lasted 25 years. I doubt it will end. Unless WWE goes out of business and that's not going to happen. So Vince is in the ring. He gets a plaque. Uh, first, Shane and Stephanie in the ring. Before Vince, they show a raw video package. Fallout Boy. It was very, very well done. Great production. It was produced. Very good. So then Vince is in the ring with them. They give him a plaque. And Stephanie says there's one person to thank and it's my dad. Stuff like that. Vince gets a plaque. He doesn't like it. And they tell him it was off of, uh, what's that? I don't know, that, that paying site where people can donate money. I forget the name of it. But Vince says this looks cheap like Brooklyn. Starts turning into Mr. McMahon, ripping Brooklyn. That's pretty funny. Vince is mad saying this plaque looks really cheap. I don't want it. And he goes, this plaque is like Brooklyn. They got plaque all over their teeth. Just ripping Brooklyn. It is very funny. And then, Stone Cold's glass breaks. Stone Cold Steve Austin. Glass breaks. The arena explodes in Brooklyn. They a huge pop. Biggest pop of the night. Stone Cold Steve Austin comes out. The guy got such a huge reaction. Watch it back. It's, it gives, it's giving me goosebumps. It was awesome. It's great to see Stone Cold again on Raw. It's been a really long time since he's been on a Raw. Stone Cold in the ring with the Mink Mans again. Pretty epic. Vin says, telling Stone Cold, Steve... Things have changed. I'm a senior citizen now. He says, but Shane is in his prime. And he throws Shane McMahon at Stone Cold. Shane gets Stone Cold Stunner. Then after that, the fans are not happy. They want to see more. And they're chanting one more time, one more time. So then Vince gets two beers. Gives one to Stone Cold. Does this. Give them a toast, they drink beer together, and Vince hugs Stone Cold. They're hugging. That was crazy to see. And then they're holding each other's arms up. Stone Cold doesn't look like he's having a good time hugging Vince. And then Vince is done, hugs him again. And then Vince turns his back and he's just standing there. He's standing there like he knows something bad is going to happen to him. Vince turns around. Stone Cold. Bam. The double bird. Kick to the gut. Stone Cold stunner on Mr. McMahon. The crowd explodes. It was a great moment. Brought back a lot of nostalgia for me. It was awesome. So then Vince gets up again. and Either Vince or Shane got stunnered again. And Stone Cold celebrates. Goes up the ramp. Hits the beers. Drinks the beer. And leaves. Kind of surprised they had Stone Cold up here in the first segment. I thought, I don't know, The Rock might appear, I thought, or Stone Cold. But in the first segment, whatever. That was kind of weird. Because Stone Cold, the guy's a main eventer. Why have him appear in the first segment? But it was a great start to the show. Raw 25 kicked off hot. It was awesome. So the first match of the night, women's action, eight woman tag, Asuka, Mickey James, Bailey, Sasha Banks teaming up, take on Nia Jax, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, and Alicia Fox. All these women will be in the first ever women's Royal Rumble. I can't wait for that. Uh, Alexa Bliss representing her shirt, because I'm a fan of hers. She's a Raw Women's Champion, so I don't think she is allowed to be in the Women's Royal Rumble. But she should be, but I don't think she will be. 
because she's a champion just like Charlotte I don't think will be allowed to either be in it maybe I'm wrong maybe if uh, Alexa or Charlotte win they could pick their own opponents for Wrestlemania I don't know but I just I, because they're champions I don't think they'll be allowed to be in it maybe they will be hopefully they are because Alexa deserves to be in it and Charlotte does too so pretty entertaining eight women's tag Bailey, Asuka, Mickey James and Sasha win and after it was great Asuka attacks her teammates Asuka attacks her partners tosses them all over the top rope and it was epic and it was awesome Asuka just destroyed everybody destroyed her partners and nobody can beat Asuka she better win the women's Royal Rumble on Sunday or else I will be pissed because Asuka, I think, Asuka's a perfect choice to give her the win. To have her be the first ever Women's Royal Rumble winner. It makes all the sense in the world because she's still undefeated. See a drink of water there. So up next we have backstage segment. This review might go on for a while. Because it's a long show. A lot to get to. The coach appears. Coach backstage with Kurt Angle, the GM. And coach is saying, what's up, Kurt? Good to see you. Stuff like that. Out comes Brooklyn Brawler. He comes in the room. And Harvey Whippleman. He comes in the room. And then Teddy Long shows up doing his little dance. That was pretty epic. He got a huge pop. And then Brother Love appears. He gets a big pop. Bruce Pritchard as Brother Love. He got a pretty good pop. And then the Boogeyman appears. Just freaking everybody out. They were all staring at him. Boogeyman had worms in his mouth. I mean, I feel sorry for those worms, but there's like millions and millions of worms. They're in the ground. Anyways, Boogeyman starts taking worms out of his mouth. That almost made me want to throw up. Because I always thought it was gross. And Boogeyman would put those worms in his mouth or put them in his opponent's mouth. That is some gross stuff that I didn't need to ever see in, in wrestling. I don't need to see guys eating worms. That's pretty damn gross. So Boogeyman takes worms out, puts them in the coach's hand. And then he leaves, and the segment's over. So I'm going to now read my uh, raw, raw 25 Twitter poll. I'll read it at the end of this review. I'll give you the results. Where I asked everybody on Twitter, at WWE NXT guy, that's my Twitter. I asked everybody to grade raw 25. So next, they tease The Undertaker is going to be live from the Manhattan Center. The, the Undertaker is up next. First, they do a video package on The Undertaker. It was very well done. It was very awesome. Then The Undertaker comes out. In the Manhattan Center, it was pretty awesome. Manhattan Center is a small building, but the fans are hype, and it's a great atmosphere. It still is. As it was in 93. Undertaker comes to the ring. The crowd is already chanting. Holy shit. Holy shit. And then the crowd starts chanting. One more match. One more match. The Undertaker cuts his promo. Basically saying. I'm not done yet. That's what I got from it. He basically said I'm not done yet. I'm not done take, digging holes. And taking souls. Stuff like that. Like it or not. Agree with it or not, The Undertaker will wrestle at WrestleMania 34. He's not going in the Hall of Fame. He's not going to be the headliner. Goldberg is the headliner, I believe. 
could be they could promote it uh, as Undertaker's last match, or if he loses, he must retire. I don't know. But why did Undertaker put his hat down, his jacket down, and take his gloves off? Why did he do that last year? I don't get it. Why did he do it if he wanted to return or come back again? Or if he felt like he could come back and be healthy enough. He had hip surgery. It was successful. He looks in pretty good shape. I mean, his arms looked pretty jacked. Like he's been working out a lot. So, if The Undertaker thought he could come back in 2018, why'd he lay his hat down and why'd he do all that? Why'd he tease us like he's retiring? I don't get I don't get it, and I don't have the answers to it. So, it was good to see Undertaker. He had to be on Raw 25. It was great to see him. He was in the first ever Raw main event from the same building, the Manhattan Center, over 25 years ago. Now the Intercontinental Championship. But first, they go backstage to the APA, playing cards, drinking... Gambling and talking to superstars like they used to always do backstage. So the, who's at, at the APA's table? Rhino, he's Slater, Million Dollar Man shows up with the Million Dollar Belt. That was awesome. He sits down like he's going to gamble. And then before the Intercontinental title match, they bring out some of the greatest Raw GMs in history. They bring them out on the stage. First was stupid jerk-off Johnny Ace. Big Johnny. I hated him as a general manager. I absolutely hated his guts, his character. I hated it. Thank God he's off TV. That guy's so boring. So Big Johnny's out. He gets a lot of booze. William Regal comes out. Regal, by the way, to save his job, he had to be the first ever member of the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club. Uh, thank God a lot of fans might not know Regal had to kiss Vince's ass if they didn't watch in 2001. I mean, I've been watching wrestling since WWF since 87, so... I know Rigo did that, but a lot of new fans probably just know him as a NXT general manager, and that's a good thing for him. Because he shouldn't be remembered as kissing Vince's ass. He should be remembered as a great worker, great technical wrestler in the NXT GM. So Rigo comes out, Eric Bischoff comes out, he gets a very good pop. Daniel Bryan comes out, the current SmackDown GM. Daniel Bryan gets a huge pop. Yes, chance everywhere. Then, The Miz. The Miz's music hits. Daniel Bryan doesn't look happy. They look like they're teasing a match, maybe, at WrestleMania, but I doubt it. Because they're stupid and they won't clear Daniel Bryan. I'm not saying he should be cleared, but the guy's gonna wrestle somewhere else. If you don't make money off him, he's going to just go somewhere else and make them money and wrestle in their ring. If you don't let him wrestle, Vince. So Miz comes out, goes face to face with Daniel Bryan. They just are staring at each other. Daniel Bryan looks pissed like he wants to knock him out. So that'd be a great match. Miz against Daniel Bryan. That would be pretty awesome. We could put a stipulation at WrestleMania 34 if Daniel Bryan loses. He's fired as a GM and can never return to WWE. Or has to leave the company. That'd be money. Daniel Bryan back in the ring against The Miz in New Orleans. That'd be money, but they're not going to do it. I don't believe so. Because Vince... Is stupid, and the WWE's doctor is stupid too, and he won't clear Daniel Bryan, even though other doctors have cleared him. So, Intercontinental title match. Roman Reigns defends against The Miz. Pretty damn exciting, good match. Miz wins the Intercontinental title. 
It was awesome. The Miz wins the Intercontinental Championship for the eighth time. He's an eight-time Intercontinental Champion. That was awesome. I didn't think they would have Roman lose the title. But now I'm afraid Roman's in the Rumble and he's probably going to win. And that's going to suck. I hope Philly burns the ring down. If Roman wins the Rumble, they should burn the ring down. To the ground. And everybody jump the barricade. And burn the ring down. If Roman wins the rumble. Because I, we don't need to see that again. So. The Miz is the new Intercontinental Champion. And that is awesome. So up next we had. More APA. Backstage gambling. Playing cards. Having fun. I like Ron Simmons. The guy's a legend. I don't like JBL. F you JBL. MVP. Backstage playing cards. It's cool to see MVP. Backstage. And then others are there. MVP and some others are... Usos are there also. Usos are watching too. So now we have... I didn't expect this. We have Christian, Christian in the middle of the ring in Brooklyn. Christian with the episode of the Peep Show. His talk show, the Peep Show. Good to see Christian back. Sadly, Edge couldn't appear. I guess because he's... I heard he's in Ireland. I guess he's shooting a movie, I don't know. Or a TV show. Good for Edge, but... He was uh, pretty... I, I think he's missed. On this Raw 25. But we had a peep show where Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan, the Raw Tag Team Champions, were the guests. Jason Jordan got booed out of Brooklyn. Booed like crazy. Jason Jordan really hated. The guy's not even a heel. And he's hated. It's damn funny. So then... The bar comes out. Sheamus and Cesaro. They are the bar. They come out, they get a huge pop, and they start chanting to Jason Jordan at him, you suck, you suck, and the fans start chanting it also. That was fun. Then a bra breaks out, Jason Jordan attacks the bar, and a bra breaks out at Royal Rumble, the bar, against Jordan Rollins for the tag titles. I want the bar to win. So then they go backstage, Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss, the current Raw Women's Champion. Great to see Alexa Bliss. She looked great. So, Alexa appears and they talk about the first ever Charlie Caruso. Charlie's gorgeous. They talk about the first ever Women's Royal Rumble match. And then Charlotte. Charlotte appears a SmackDown Women's Champion. Charlotte says... The only reason you're the Raw Women's Champion because I'm not here anymore. And then Charlotte appears and has brings out her father. Says my father's here and he wants to say something. Ric Flair appears, cuts a short promo. It was pretty awesome. And then Charlotte and Ric Flair together they do a woo. I could have done a better one, but my voice is kind of sore. Let me try again. Woo! <clears throat> Not very good. One more time I'm going to try it. Woo! There. Anyways. Uh, <coughs> the APA backstage again. APA gambling it up. Taking everybody's money and you know, they had chips on the table. I don't know if they are playing with real money, but who cares? APA backstage, Natalia's joined them. He Slater says, I have a royal flush or something, or uh, something like that. And then Natalia says, I've got this. And then she says, Queen, or something like that. Queen of Hearts. So Natalia wins and takes all the chips. So now we have from the Manhattan Center... Where JR and Jerry the King Lawler were from the Manhattan Center. Bray Wyatt appears, comes out. 
Then Broken, Woken, not Broken, Woken, Matt Hardy's music hits. That is pretty damn surprising. I did not expect a Bray Wyatt versus Matt Hardy match. I did not expect it on Raw 25. So it was a nice surprise. In the ring, in the Manhattan Center, was red, white, and blue robes. Old school Raw look. Referee had the old referee t-shirt on. They had the Raw, Monday Night Raw banners hanging, and one of the banners said Ico Pro. <laughs> that, that's not a very good idea. To be hanging an Ico Pro banner, because that, I don't know what that stuff was. I don't think it was steroids, but that was pretty weird to see that Ico, Ico Pro banner hanging. Anyways. Maybe that wasn't too good of an idea when Roman Reigns was accused of buying steroids from a dealer. I don't think Roman would be that stupid, but I don't know if it's true or not. And I don't care. I prefer my wrestlers be on steroids. I'm just kidding. I don't prefer it, but a lot of them are probably on the juice and it doesn't affect me one bit. I mean, I don't want them abusing steroids because then they'll just die when they're in their 40s. And we don't need any, a whole bunch of new dead wrestlers. So now we have Bray Wyatt wins, defeats Woken, Matt, a ton of delete chants. Up next we have some of the greatest. JoJo, the announcer in Brooklyn, says, Now, here are some of the greatest women in Raw history. The Bella Twins come out first. They got a pretty good pop. I guess people miss them. I didn't. I think Bree's hot, but that's about it. I didn't miss them as wrestlers. But it was fine that they appeared on the show. Maurice appears. I love Maurice. I was a fan of hers when she was Divas Champion. Kelly Kelly appears. She looked pretty good. I wasn't a fan of hers, but she's very attractive. Lillian Garcia, she looked great. Lillian is like, I think over 50 years old, and she looked really good. Really, absolutely stunning. Really, really beautiful. Jacqueline appeared. She looked pretty good. Hall of Famer Jacqueline. And they mentioned she was the first ever African American women's champion for WWE. Tori Wilson appeared. She looked pretty damn good. I believe she's might be like, I don't know, thirty nine years old. I don't know. But she looked damn good. Michelle McCool appeared, Undertaker's wife. I will not say a bad word about her because Undertaker would rip my head off. Terry Reynolds, she looked pretty good. She appeared. Maria Canellis appeared pregnant. Also, Maurice is pregnant. Those are going to be two really hot milfs when they have their kids. Maria appeared as great to see her. Crowd gave her a lot of love. And she was holding her stomach because she's pregnant. Trish Stratus, a final a woman to appear, her theme song, Go, It's Time to Rock and Roll. They, and I don't remember the rest of the lyrics. Might be something like, This time I'm in control. I don't remember it, but very good theme song. I like Trish's theme. Trish, Strat Trish Stratus. Um, can't even say her name because she looks so damn beautiful. She looked great. So hopefully Trish is in the Women's Raw Rumble along with Michelle McCool, Kelly Kelly, I don't know who else. Jacqueline should be in it. Uh, sadly, Maurice and Maria cannot be in it because they're pregnant. Bella's will probably also be in it. Um, the thing that's kind of surprising, all these women that they brought back, some from the Attitude Era, like Jacqueline, Terry Reynolds, 
and some from Ruthless Aggression era, like Tori Wilson. Anyways, I was surprised there was no Lita. She deserved to be there. I don't know why they couldn't bring her back, but Lita deserved to be a part of this segment. And she wasn't. I don't know why. But Lita was a big part of Monday Night Raw. Her and Trish, they had a great rivalry. So next you had Elias backstage walking and then he runs into Y to J Raw is Jericho. Jericho's just staring at him. Crowd is going insane. Kinda sucks. Jericho didn't appear in the ring. But he was backstage. Maybe he had to go be somewhere. I don't know. Jericho says, Elias, I see you're wearing scarves. And then he says, I wrote a song, Elias. And I brought my own guitar and I wrote a song about you. Jericho starts singing, says, Elias, you are a stupid idiot. And you just... He says, you just... And I knew he was going to say this next. He goes, you just made... And then he pulls it out. The list of Jericho gets a huge pop. Says, you just made... And then he goes, no, Elias, I'm not going to put you on it. He goes, you thought you were going to get put on it, but I'm not. Then Jericho goes, nope. And goes, bam, with his pen. You just made the list. Puts Elias on the list. Elias walks away. That was epic. That was really funny. And uh, they're back from commercial. And Elias is in the ring to do a song. In front of Brooklyn. Rips the legends on the show. Rips Brooklyn. It was pretty damn funny. Elias is great. The guy is super talented. Really entertaining. The guy is really entertaining. He's going to have to be a great worker. The guy's just damn entertaining. His gimmick is great. Comes out to the ring, sings, plays his guitar, rips the fans, rips the cities. It's awesome. Elias is in the Royal Rumble. I hope he's like at least one of the Final Four. So then John Cena's music hits. John Cena comes out and gets a huge chant of John Cena sucks John Cena sucks Cena comes out tries to attack Elias with his few moves shoulder tackle Elias bashes his guitar against breaks and smashes it on John Cena that was awesome uh, then I'm next they do Royal Rumble hype hyping up the matches at the Royal Rumble then they go back to the APA again. Then we have a tag match. Titus. Titus Worldwide. Titus and Apollo Crews take on Rhino and Heath Slater. This was pretty pointless. Because it ended in a double DQ and it just basically was pointless. But we got to see the Dudleys return. The Dudleys come out get a huge pop. Dudleys come out. They do their what's up. Devon comes off the top. That is so 2000. That what's up chant. But it's still pretty funny. And then the fans are chanting tables. Ch tables. Bubba pushes Devon. Says get the tables. They do a 3D. 3D to Heath Slater through the table. It was good to see the Dudleys. So then they go backstage, AJ Styles, WWE Champion, on Raw. That was kind of odd to see AJ on Raw. But AJ says, I have a special person in, that I want to interview me. <coughs> and he says, ladies and gentlemen, Mean Gene Okerlin, Mean Gene comes out. He couldn't, he could speak, but I don't know. He looked kind of tired. Like, sadly, Mean Gene is getting up there in age. The guy's a legend. The guy's a Hall of Famer. The guy's one of the greatest interviewers of all time. I mean, Mean 
Gene, that guy, I grew up, I grew up with Mean Gene Okerlund, seeing that guy on TV. So when he passes away, it'll be really sad. But Mean Gene with AJ Styles, that was pretty awesome. AJ basically just promoting Royal Rumble, saying I'm going to win and retain. Now we go to the Manhattan Center, where they say DX is up next. From the Manhattan Center, Triple H out first with Shawn Michaels. They talk and say, we, saying, DX, we did everything. We said what we wanted. We said whatever we wanted. And then Shawn tries to tell some stories about the Attitude Era and DX and Triple H puts his hand on the mic and says, you can't, you can't tell that story. You can't. Pretty funny. And Shawn starts somehow when they were all hairy and they showed their asses and their G-strings. <laughs> and Triple H goes, no, no, you can't tell that story either. It was pretty funny. And then Triple H says, we used to be DX, the original, ravishing Rick Rude we were with. He got a pop, and he should have. And he says, the ninth wonder of the world, China, she got a pop. And hopefully Rick Rude, China, are looking down. Hopefully they have a smile on their face. Looking down on Raw 25 tonight. At least I hope they saw it. So DX is out, and... The New Age Outlaws music hits. They come out, get a pretty good reaction. Road Dog, the guy's a bad booker, bad head writer, but as part of the New Age Outlaws, he was over. Billy Gunn, with him. Billy Gunn was a beast. When that guy's in his prime, he was really good. Billy Gunn, I thought, should have been a WWE champion when he was in his prime. 98, 99, I thought, I loved Billy Gunn. He's one of my favorite wrestlers in 98 and 99. So, Billy Gunn, the guy looked great. The guy doesn't age. The guy still is in great shape. I've actually seen Billy Gunn wrestle for Tommy Dreamer's House of Hardcore. So then, out comes X-Pac, after the New Age Outlaws and Xbox in the ring, the fans are pretty cool. They start chanting one, two, three, one, two, three at them. And then Xbox says, "You can't, we can't have this reunion without basically a bad guy." And then Razor Ramon's music hits. Scott Hall comes out. That was pretty epic to see. And then they cut his entrance off and went to commercial. That pissed me off. And that was disrespectful and stupid. So they come back. Scott Oz in the ring. At least they didn't cut off this part. He goes, hey, yo. That gets a pop. And Scott Oz says, I got two words for, I think he said this, something like, I got two words for everybody about the reunion. It's just too sweet. Sadly, Kevin Nash could not be there. He should have been there, but he couldn't travel, I guess. Is he had knee replacement surgery. I guess he couldn't travel. But sadly, Kevin Nash. I was thinking on Kevin Nash, because that guy's a part of the clique. And uh, I don't care what anybody says. I was a fan of Kevin Nash. When he was Diesel, and when he's in the NWO as Kevin Nash, I was always a fan of him. I don't got any hatred towards Kevin Nash. Uh, I love the guy. I love Scott Hall. I'm glad he's alive and healthy. And I hope he stays sober. Same with X-Pac. I hope he stays sober. Uh, it's, a, it's a great thing that every click member... Every click member is still alive. That's a great thing. Sadly, Rick Rude, part of DX... In China have passed away. So then. As DX and Scott Hall are in the ring. In the Manhattan Center. The Balor Club. Finn Ballard and the Balor Club come out. That gets a huge pop. They come out. They just stare at each other. 
Then they all put it up. They all put it up. Middle of the ring and all of them together do the two sweet. That was pretty awesome. That was a great raw moment. Then the Revival's music hits. The Revival comes out. And they challenge the club. Gallows and Anderson against the Revival. It wasn't a long match. The club wins. And then the Revival gets beat up. They get super kicked. They get pedigreed. They get Scott Hall's toothpick in the face. That was awesome. They get uh, Billy Gunn's famous er. That was awesome. So they had to end. They all hold each other's hands up and doing the two sweet sign. That was awesome. So now we have the uh, main event segment. Kurt Angle comes out with all the legends in Brooklyn. New Day comes out. Usos come out. I saw Axel come out. Bo Dallas. I think The Miz came out. Eric Bischoff came out. They were all around ringside. Gold Dust was there. APA was there. Brother Love was there. Teddy Long. I think the Boogeyman was there. I, but I didn't see him really. I didn't look for him. So anyways... Out first, Kurt Angle says, Brooklyn, you've been great tonight. Something like that. Out first comes Braun Strowman. Then comes Kane. Then comes Brock Lesnar. Paul Heyman hypes him up really good in a promo. Brock comes out, gets in the ring, hits a F5 on Kane. They go to the outside. Braun just tosses Kane. I mean, tosses Brock into the barricade like he's a baby. And just throws Brock. And then Braun picks him up. Running power slam through the announcer's table at ringside. Braun goes in the ring. Does his pose. And it ends. Raw 25 ends and is in the books. A lot of people tweeted me. Like two different people. That this Raw made no sense. Who cares? It was a fun show. It was a nostalgic show. It was fun to watch. It was good times. It was fun to watch. Brought me back to the good old days of the Monday Night Wars. It was great to see Stone Cold stunning Vince. That was awesome. Stunning Shane. And my goodness, Stone Cold, what a pop he got. What a huge reaction Stone Cold Steve Austin got. Just thinking about it gives me goosebumps. How loud it was. I wish I would have been there. It would have been epic. I actually have a friend that uh, went to Raw 25 in Brooklyn. She knows who she is. So anyways, uh, her Twitter name is WWE uh, Demon Diva. At WWE Demon Diva. She was at Raw 25. She's a good friend of mine. At least I think of her as a friend. I don't know if she feels the same. But we do follow each other. So here's the poll. Grade tonight's Raw 25. 65 votes have been cast. Thanks for voting. Whoever did. 46% give it a D. I disagree. Not a D. 26% gave it a C. 23% gave it a B plus. 6% gave it a A. I would give the show... Uh, sadly, I wish Kevin Nash would have been on the show. But he couldn't be there. Would have been nice to see Edge. Would have been nice to see Jeff Hardy. Would have been nice to see Lita. Would have been nice to see Hulk Hogan. But they did not appear. I guess Hulk Hogan's banned forever. Which is ridiculous. I mean you brought back Ultimate Warrior. That guy's a homophobic racist piece of, sh piece of shit. Was the Ultimate Warrior. Guy walked out on Vince. Guy held up Vince for money. And you brought him back, but you're going to ban Hogan forever? That doesn't make sense to me. And I guess all you care about is the advertisers. 
That's why they won't bring Hogan back because they just care about the advertisers. And they can do what they want. I'm still going to watch WWE without Hulk Hogan. I'll still enjoy it. So the Raw poll, Raw 25 poll, 45% gave it a D. Second place is a C, 26%, 23% B+, plus, 6% A. I give it a B, I will give it a B, not a B+, plus. I'll give it a B, because the show went felt too long. That's why it gets a B and not a B+. Plus. And I don't know, I mean the two locations, that was pretty damn cool, watching from home, but... If you were there in Brooklyn when the Manhattan Center was doing live stuff and you just had to watch on a screen, that would probably be pretty boring. But whatever. Brooklyn got to see a lot of action. A lot of stars. Brooklyn got Stone Cold. Vince. They got Braun, Brock, Kane. And uh, Brooklyn got The Undertaker and DX and Woken Matt and Bray. And the Revival, and the Ballard Club, and the Club. It, pretty awesome. So this Raw 25 gets a B grade from me. Again, I enjoyed Raw 25. Who cares that it didn't make sense? It did make sense at the end because they pushed and promoted the Royal Rumble Triple Threat match for the Universal title. So at the very end, it did make sense. In my opinion. Hope you enjoyed this Raw 25 review. Follow me on Twitter at WWE NXT Guy. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Bye for now.